Hello friends. In our previous sessions, we have already seen two approaches to exchange rate determination. One, the purchasing power parity theory. The other, the monetary approach to exchange rate determination. In purchasing power parity theory, the exchange rate was determined as a ratio of domestic to foreign price level. While monetary approach believes that exchange rate can be calculated as a ratio of relative supply of money to relative demand for money. Today, we are looking at an extension of monetary approach called the asset market model or portfolio balance approach. Welcome to the video. Asset market model or portfolio balance approach extends the monetary approach to include the other financial asset apart from money. We have already seen that the monetary approach exclusively focuses on a sole financial asset which is money, while the asset market extends the monetary approach to include two other financial assets, namely the domestic bond as well as foreign bond. The literature was developed since mid 1970s and there is a large number of asset market models in existence. The approach was pioneered by William Brazen and Penty Corey and has been subsequently modified by Maurice Hopsfield, Gerton and Henderson, Allen and Cannon etc. The model postulates that the exchange rate is determined in the process of equilibrating or balancing the stock or the total demand and supply of financial asset in which the money is one of the financial asset. So it considers more than one financial asset that is regarded as more realistic, more comprehensive and satisfactory version than that of the monetary approach. The model emphasizes the role of portfolio repositioning by the international financial investors as well. One of the simplest asset market model argues that individuals and firms hold their financial wealth in the combination of three financial assets, namely domestic money, domestic bond, as well as foreign bond, which is denominated in foreign currency. The motive for holding domestic money is obviously to carry out a day-to-day -day business transaction. Though holding of domestic money is riskless, it provides no interest or no yield. Thus, the opportunity cost of holding domestic money is the interest with earning which is foregone by not holding either domestic or foreign bond. The incentive for holding domestic bond is that they carry the rate of interest. But they do carry the risk of default and variability of the market value over time. The benefit of holding foreign bond is that it allows an investor to spread his risk because the disturbances of lower return in one country may not be likely to appear the same time in other countries as well. So risk spreading is possible by holding foreign bond. But it poses an additional risk in the sense that it is denominated in foreign currency which may depreciate resulting in a capital loss. That is foreign bond always involves a foreign exchange risk. The portfolio balance approach differs from monetary approach in another aspect is that in monetary approach domestic and foreign bonds are considered as perfect substitutes. But in asset market model now they are assumed as imperfect substitute because the investors regard domestic and foreign bonds as having different characteristics other than their currency of denomination. So, individual wants to hold, or firms wants to hold their financial asset in the forms of three financial asset. Once more, the motive for holding domestic money is to carry out day-to-day -day business transaction, domestic for bond for the return it get, gets, and foreign bond for spreading the risk. An equilibrium in each financial market occurs when quantity demanded of in each financial asset equals its supply. Investors always want to hold a diversified and balanced portfolio of financial asset. That is why the asset market model is also known as a portfolio balance approach. 
and the exchange rate is determined in the process of reaching equilibrium in each financial asset. Now, asset market model like monetary approach specifies the factors that influence the demand function of all these three financial assets, domestic bond, money as well as foreign bond like the monetary approach which has already specified the demand function of money and the demand function of these three financial assets is measured or influenced by seven explanatory variables which are domestic rate of interest foreign rate of interest expected appreciation of the foreign currency risk premium which is required to compensate the residents for additional risk of holding foreign bond. So RP or risk premium basically simplifies the additional risk of holding foreign bond. Y which represents the real income or output. P is the domestic price level. Wealth which is represented as W. So we have seven explanatory variables that influences the demand function of all these three financial assets. Now, let us analyze the demand function of each financial asset. We have the demand function of money, which is a function of domestic rate of interest, foreign rate of interest, expected appreciation of foreign currency, risk premium, Y, P and W. Now, money is inversely related to domestic rate of interest, obviously, because as domestic rate of interest increases, demand for domestic bond increases, not that of money. So, it is inversely related to I as well as I star. It is inversely related to expected appreciation because if expected appreciation increases, the, the investors want to hold more of that of foreign currency. But it is positively related to risk premium. As risk increases, people want to hold more that of uh, more of money as well as domestic bond. Obviously, money has a positive association with Y and P. We have already seen that. As far as the quantity theory of money or as far as monetary school is concerned, money do have a demand for money is positively associated with both Y as well as P. W will always be positive. Wealth and as a form of wealth, M, both money, foreign bond as well as domestic bond will have a positive association with that of W. So, in a sense, demand for money is positively related to risk premium, real income, prices as well as wealth. While it is inversely related to both rate of interest, domestic as well as foreign rate of interest, expected appreciation of foreign currency as well as. Now, we are moving towards the second financial asset which is domestic bond. It is positively related to rate of interest I. Because I is obviously the return for domestic bond as I increases, demand for domestic bond also will increase. It is positively related to the risk premium. Because as risk of holding foreign bond increases, demand for domestic bond increases. It is always positively related to W. It is inversely related to foreign rate of interest, I star. Because as I star increases, demand for foreign bond increases. It is inversely related to expected appreciation and Y and P. Now, final demand function for our third financial asset, which is the foreign bond. It is positively related to the foreign rate of interest, which is the return for foreign bond. Again, it is positively related to the expected appreciation of foreign currency. When foreign currency is expected to appreciate, people want to hold more of foreign bond. That is, there is a positive association between expected appreciation of foreign currency or EA and F. Always, there is a positive association with W and F. While foreign bond is inversely related to the domestic rate of interest, risk premium, Y as well as P. So, having specified these demand function of for these three financial assets, and all these financial assets are considered to be substituted in the sense that changes in any of the one variable will set in motion a whole lot of adjustment as far as of the investors are concerned. Now, setting these demand function equal to their supplies. In the asset market model, the supply is assumed to be exogenously determined. So, we will get equilibrium 
quantity of all these three financial assets namely money foreign bond as well as domestic bond and these equilibrium values are obtained simultaneously as well now we are moving towards the last part which is the portfolio adjustment and exchange rate whenever there are changes in at least one of the variable or one of the determinants of these financial asset it will set in motion a lot of changes now given the investors how to reach the equilibrium several exogenous factors may influence the or may cause disturbances compelling the investors to change their already established financial portfolio in response the investors may buy or sell various financial assets in order to obtain a new desired portfolio for example let us suppose that there is an increase in the domestic rate of interest we have already said that when there is an increase in the domestic rate of interest there will be an increased demand for domestic bond and a reduction in the demand for money as well as foreign bond a reduced demand for foreign bond and increased demand for domestic bond will lead to a sale of foreign currency and a purchase of domestic currency as, at least as far as the foreign investors are concerned leading to an appreciation in the value of home currency when there is an appreciation in the value of home currency this will obviously lead to changes in expected appreciation risk premium yp and w in the end a new equilibrium will be re established and all the markets will reach a new equilibrium simultaneously and it should be said that the portfolio approach believes that the currency appreciation or depreciation and the balance of payment disequilibrium either in surplus or deficit will only be temporary it will only happen when there is a repositioning or portfolio adjustment from the part of the investors it occurs only when the adjustment process is going on and new equilibrium portfolio is taking place so adjust like the monetary approach the portfolio approach also argues that the adjustment process will only be temporary and ultimately the equilibrium will be simultaneously established thus the portfolio balance approach is more realistic compared to that of monetary approach hope that this video is useful to you you can always visit our blog www.skpeco.blogspot.it for additional study materials until next time stay safe happy learning thank you